welcome to our Calp and Fury Soil. My name is Haruman Gabriel Devot. And I am Serge Jirimbawazi. We are both trainers at Ruenja Tibet School. Today we start a video series about roof construction. In the three videos, we will learn about planning, production, and mounting a roof. So, let's start. Hello everyone, my name is Sethi Munyehipe. Um, and I'm a carpentry trainer at Rwenjera Tibet School. So um, today we have the session about roof framing and the objective for the session is that actually later you will be able to plan the roof and to prepare the materials for the roof. So in order to achieve the objectives, we will produce the sample roof, so made by the trusses and the raster, and we will also talk about different shapes of the roof, and of course, we have the different materials that we will use in order to have that sample ready. So now what I request you is that you can throw away and take notes because it's important. Because my wish is that in the end you will be well equipped with the skills in, of uh, roof construction. So we are on the site now and this is the very first step that we have to do in roof construction. To go on the site and to check how is the site, we take the necessary information so that later the roof will build, it's fitting with the place where we have uh, to fix it. So this site we have now, it is improvisational site because uh, we also produce a sample roof, but it is similar to the real situation. So actually what we need, it is to select necessary tools that we need in measuring. So that's why I have where to take my information. I have the pencil so that I can be able to write down so, besides this, the other tools I need, it's the water level, just to check if the press is well leveled. So, I also need the measuring tools. I can use this step measure, the wrong one, in case the size is too wrong, or I can use this small one. But I have another possibility that I can also use the folding ruler. So there are different tools that we can use at this stage. Now what we are going to do, we are going to take the measurements and we will check the level. So then I will, I will uh, measure and check the level and especially with the measurements as I need them, I'm going to write them down. The first thing that I will need is to make a very simple sketch on my paper so that I will know which information is fitting with which side on the side. So now let us talk about the roof shapes that we are having as it is very necessary during roof designing. So actually we have three categories. We have flat roof and the flat roof actually it is this kind of roof. We call it flat roof because it is inclined on a very small angle so that when you look it by eyes it looks nearly flat. The second category that we are having there it is pitched roof or angled roof. The pitched roofs that we are having actually, it is this shaped roof, so it is just a roof with one slope. Another one that we are having, it is gable roof. The gable roof, then it will be a roof with two slopes. We also have hip roof. The hip roof, then it will be the roof with four slopes. So we have two slopes from uh, the ends and two slopes from the sides. And then it is a hip roof. Another roof that we are having, it is mansard roof. Mansard roof has got six slopes. So the four slopes are looking like the ones that we have on the hip roof plus two slopes additional. This one and this one. 
the first category that we are having it is curved roof. The curved roof we just want to mean the roof which is uh, constructed by using the curve. Designing a roof actually needs also some calculations. Maybe you are asking yourself why you studied trigonometry, but now this is the time to use it. So we do different calculations and they all based on trigonometry. We calculate the angle, and to calculate the angle, there are two possibilities. Either we have the angle and then you can calculate the rise, or we have the rise and then you can calculate the angle. But besides this, we have the run, which is already measured on the side to help us to, to calculate both of them, either the rise or the angle. The next thing that we calculate actually it is a slope. The slope it is the ratio which shows the steepness of the roof. So to get the ratio actually, we consider run as 12. So this is the number which is fixed there. And then depending on the number that you can give to the rise, maybe one, maybe six, and then we can be able to know the ratio on which our roof is calculated. The next thing that you can calculate on the roof, it is a pitch. Pitch, it is the inclination of the roof shown by the rise over the span. Finally, uh, we have to calculate the rafter length. The rafter length to get it, we have now two triangles, the first triangle and the second triangle which determines the eve. So what we do, we calculate this hypotenuse by using this formula. We also calculate this hypotenuse we have here by this formula and then later we have to add them. But the eve is actually provided. Now I want to explain something about trusses as they are used in roof framing construction. So we have the king post truss as used in framing, roof framing construction and it is called king post truss because we have this piece in the middle which is called king post. So besides this the truss is made by the rafters, it is made by the bottom cord and it is made by the waves. With this truss, you have two webs, but it's not obligation. We can put many webs depending on the size of the truss. The next truss that we have, it is queen post truss. It is called queen post truss because of these two pieces, which are called queen post. So the other parts are the same, like the king post truss, but we have another piece uh, which is horizontal, and this piece is a web. So it is a bit different because on another one, they were fixed in the diagonal way. So actually the waves are there to avoid that the rafters can bend or they increase the strength of the truss in general. So these are the two common trusses that we can have, but besides this we can mix the materials for example, and then we use wood and metal, like this we will have composite truss. We can also use only metal, and then we have metal truss. Now the next step that we have is material selection. Actually, in roof framing, we have different possibilities of using different materials. So we can use metal, we can use round wood, and we can use converted wood. So that's why for us we use a converted wood. So and during selection we need the tools. So we need the folding ruler, we need the hydrometer, just to measure the moisture content. So and again, during our selection to have nice piece, we need to select the pieces according to the splitting and according to the to the knots. So we have to com consider them very much because um, if the wood we select later has those two defects, then it's a big challenge for the stability or for the strength of the wood. So now let's measure the pieces to check how it is. So this one is having the moisture content which is around 15%. So now let's compare it with another piece that we got in our stock uh, during the last days. The moisture content is far too high. So that's why uh, we can use uh, these pieces because the moisture content is better. So but then again, this is not a nice piece because of the knot and the spirit which will reduce the strength of the roof. So 
moisture content was measured so so this should be okay so at least it's the piece that I can take with me so now we are in the workshop for the preparation of the pieces that we already select so the first thing in the workshop is safety so we need PPE like ear protection, tight clothes and security shoes so now the first machine that we need in the preparation of our pieces is trim saw for rough cross cutting. So the, for the safety of the machine, we need to make sure that the danger zone is free from anything. So actually this is also the safety of me. So we need to hold the machine by both hands. Or if it's not in that way, I can also hold the piece like this. But I always have to work with both hands. Now with the pieces from the trim saw, so you can see they are cut, so we need to print one face so that they are flat and then it is easier to proceed with the pieces to the next uh, steps. With the, with the safety once again we need PPE and we need to make sure that the danger zone is well arranged and then special thing for the surface printer is how we have to, uh, to press and move the piece. So the hands should be together and when we are pushing the piece, once we have already the print piece, then this is where we press in order to have the flat piece at the end. So with this piece from the surface printer, now we need to print another side uh, so that we have the final thickness of uh, 50 and actually this is the thickness we need. So we need PPE, we need to make sure that the danger zone is okay and for the machine we need to make sure that we remove let's say maximum of 1.5 millimeters just for the safety of the machine. We hope that you could follow the steps well. If you like to repeat the contents once again, you can find this video on e-learning website of Rwanda Polytechnic. We hope to welcome you soon for the next lesson. Until then, stay safe and goodbye. goodbye.